created a committee. I'm not going to say they created this committee for me. But I'm going to tell you what happened before this committee. They created our Department of Children's Services in 1995, and in the very same year, they created in the statute an oversight committee. I didn't know about that then, but in 2011, I had a really bad case. I needed oversight. And that oversight committee, according to the legislature, was supposed to have public hearings. And so I start calling around. I start calling for legislative history, the archives, the Speaker of the House's office. I'm like, where's this committee? I need a meeting. And guess what? They never created it. I was looking 20 years later. They had never created it. And guess what else? Oh, well, so first of all, as an attorney, I do everything I can as an attorney. I went to our chancery court and I filed what's called a writ of mandamus, which is a court order to order the government to do something that they have to do. The chancellor said, I'm not going to tell the governor what to do. Denied it. And then guess what else? Two weeks later, the law for the oversight committee was repealed. So this year, 2019, they gave me an oversight committee, a legislative oversight committee called Children and Families. And so I went and I talked to them. They gave me three minutes. I wanted to bring six families with me so they could hear the horror. They would not allow it. And so they gave me three minutes. And so I used words like it was draconian, it was generational genocide, that, that parents had less right than criminals. And these, these legislators looked at me like, you use some pretty strong language here. I said, listen to me. I went to every one of them and I had a meeting in their office individually, took them stats, took them information. But let me tell you what they did <laughs> in spite of that. They created a law, and I know we're speaking from Michigan, and I know these videos are going to go all over, but these laws travel around the country. So if you don't have this law yet, now that Tennessee's passed it, I trust you, we got it from somebody, it's going to be sitting in your General Assembly in a year or two. So they passed a new law that if there's an open CPS investigation and a parent changes a child's school enrollment, they can go to jail. A parent could go to jail. Now, I don't mean there's a finding of abuse. I don't mean there's a petition filed on verified information. I don't mean anybody's sworn to it. I mean, if they just get an anonymous call from a grumpy neighbor that you spanked your kid in the yard, maybe you did or didn't, and you, who I'm telling you, people are starting to freak out about it. Somebody come knocking on your door and want to see your kids. People are starting to freak out about it. And I've had more than one family pull their kids out of school and homeschool them. Now it's a crime. Now it's a year in jail for a parent. And if you cross a state line, it's a felony. A felony. Ex parte orders, as an attorney, the things that I see, ex parte orders are the demon, the demon. I practice other kinds of law. I don't just practice family law. I do contract law. I do civil litigation. You can't go into a court in a normal case and tell a judge, 